Today I want to talk about something I was told by a friend of mine that I didn't quite understand at first, but I started to develop and it quickly became one of the most important fighting game skills that I've been working on lately. But before we get into it, if you do enjoy this video or any of the ones you might have seen on this channel in the past, please consider subscribing. I'm getting very close to 3,000 and I'd really appreciate it. The single most beneficial skill that I've been trying to develop after uh, one of my friends and mentors sort of told me is condensing my mental stack. And what that means is just basically the things that are on your mind while you're playing, condensing those into what actually matters. But how do we determine those things? How do we actually uh, figure out what does matter and what we should keep in mind? Sometimes this can be pretty simple if you're playing against low level players and it gets harder as you sort of move up the rank and move up uh, in player skill. But at the very core of it, you have to know what the characters in the game you're playing do, or at the very least, the one that you're playing against. And it can start out with things like, oh, I know Ryu has a fireball, I know he has a tattoo, and I know he has like Jodan kick. And maybe you you know a little bit of frame data. Maybe you know that his Jonin kick is negative and you know that his Tatsu is negative. You could say that you have a basic understanding of all the options that Ryu has, but in the heat of the moment, that's a lot of stuff to keep on your mind. You have like four or five special moves that you know, you know all of his normals, and then you have to know his command normals. It's a lot for your brain to be processing while you're actively playing your own character and maybe even learning it. So your mental stack is very high because you're thinking, oh, Ryu's at this distance. What's he going to do? What's he going to press? He's going to press this, that, and the other. And so what you need to do at that point is condense it. And we can do this by just focusing on the options that the opponent is using. It's good to know that Ryu has all these options, but it's not helping you if he's not using them. For example, at low levels, a lot of Ryu players will just throw a fireball, dash up, do crouch medium kick, and try and confirm it into Jodan. And so you ask yourself, what have you identified? What does he like to do? He likes to dash. That's the movement option of choice. He likes to throw his fireballs. So you, if you have an anti-fireball move, use that. And when he does get in range, he likes to throw crouch medium kick. And so those are the three things on my mind. And until he shows me otherwise that he's willing to use other options, I'm going to just try and defeat those three things that we talked about. And then you can start to play the game where you can condense it even more. Because if I know after he throws his fireball, he's going to dash, I can preemptively check the dash with like a jab or something. I can throw out a jab. And if it doesn't reach, it doesn't reach. And if he jumps my jab recovers in time to where I can still anti-air. That eliminates the crouch medium kick completely because you've checked the dash. So that crouch medium kick is not coming. He's probably going to backdash and throw another fireball and the cycle is going to repeat. And then he'll start jumping out of desperation and then you'll have to anti-air more and you, you'll start to adapt. And this isn't always going to work. Sometimes I think I have a good game plan going and I've condensed it enough to where I'm going to win and then he throws in some other option. And that may seem like um, they're, they're random at the time, right? Like maybe he knows my game plan is checking his dashes so he supers, right? He dash up super. And since I'm preemptively checking a dash, I'm, my button's out, like I'm gonna get hit. And then I get kind of frustrated, right? Because I feel like that was random, but it wasn't, he just saw through us. The important part is that I'm thinking, we're thinking now. We're not completely autopiloting through the ranks or through these games. Because at those lower ranks, like when you're traversing through them and you start to improve, it can be easy to fall into an autopilot that just works a lot of the time. And you start beating very common options. But you'll realize like when you play an actually really good player, they're so good at mixing up their options, it becomes harder to condense your game plan into what you need it to be. That's where like very high level footies comes into play. Like because these two players know every option of the characters on the screen and they know how to mix them up very well to make the opponent feel uncomfortable and to mess up and make mistakes. But that just comes over time, like an experience. You have to play a lot of matches against a lot of different matchups because you have to understand all the characters. That That's the basis of everything. That's the core of it. I honestly think that's why I always circle back to Street Fighter V, even though like I go play these other games. I always come back because I know most of the characters and how they function pretty well on a very basic level, right? If I There's no character that I play against where I'm like, holy shit, I don't know anything that they do. Actually, Dalsum. That's probably the, <laughs> that's probably the only character. But besides him, I know what all their special moves do, and I know what most of the command normals do. So if I see them using and like abusing one single button or like one command normal, one special move, whatever it is, I feel like I can develop a pretty good game plan around it because I understand how it functions. And I can understand what the opposing character needs to do to win. And my goal is to disrupt that by punishing whatever uh, thing they like to use a lot. This becomes a problem when I'm playing games like Guilty Gear because I don't really understand a lot of the characters in that game. There's probably two, maybe Potemkin you could say I understand because I think he's pretty uh, basic in what he needs to do to get in and all the options that he has. But I'd say Ramathal and Giovanna are the two that I understand the most because I've played them, right? But just thinking of all the time I had to put into Street Fighter just to uh, catch up and like understand what's going on, it kind of deters me from picking up Guilty Gear just because I know 
<laughs> I know how much I'll have to learn about all the characters in order to beat them. And that's how I felt when I played Grand Blue. And I actually did it in Grand Blue. I knew a lot of the matchups and I knew how a lot of the characters like to function. But by the time I had figured most of the stuff out, um, the game had kind of fizzled out. Like it was kind of dying because offline was gone and online was pretty trash. And I kind of felt like I had wasted my time. Was it a fully waste of time? I don't think so. I had fun and a lot of those skills carried over to Street Fighter, like back to Street Fighter. But I think that's sort of like the root of why I'm scared to venture away from Street Fighter sometimes is because uh, I feel like I've been burned in the past by like people falling out of love with the game in mass and just kind of going back to their main titles. But I think Guilty Gear is actually different. I think Strive at least is actually different because it's been out for almost a year now, I think, a year next month, and there's still two to 3,000 people playing it on the PC and the brackets are still pretty filled up, so. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, I hope you'll consider subscribing, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.